is this long-awaited sequel to it chapter one that came out a couple of years ago and this film has the adult counterparts of the kids that we got to know in part of the losers club this time they're played by jessica chastain james mcavoy bill Hader, a bunch of other great actors and this is of course the one where pennywise comes back to make things float 27 years have passed since the Losers Club decided to basically defeat Pennywise, and they did, but they made a pact saying that if he ever did come back, that they would come back to Derry, Maine to finish the job once and for all. And so, 27 years have passed, it's 2016, and lo and behold, Pennywise is back terrorizing the place and killing some kids, and now they have to band together to finally give him the one old punch and just basically... Get him over with once and for all. That's almost undisputedly a fact that the first It movie is very universally praised. It's one of the few movies that on social media later, when I first gave it a 9 out of 10, I have gone back saying I will probably bump it up to a 10 out of 10. And I actually did. I bumped it up to a 10 out of 10. Not officially on the video though. And I love that film. It got better on me with me on repeat viewings and naturally because of that I couldn't wait to see what was in store for it chapter 2 especially with Andy Muschietti returning as director and That's it. That's that's really exciting. You know, I, I really want to see how this wraps up I saw this film tonight a whole 17 days before the film actually releases in theaters at the time I'm making this review, I don't know when the embargo lifts. Let's start with the positives. The performances, all of them around the board, fantastic. Jessica Chastain's great. James McAvoy's great. i sorry, I don't know the actors who play the other characters, but they're also really, really great here. But the standout has to be Bill Hader. He gives a really great performance. There's apparently a chatter been going on ever since the film came out to have him included in a Best Supporting Actor conversation for the Oscars. If I was to go by right now, fuck yeah, I'd put him in that conversation. He honestly deserves it. He's really, really good in this film. He plays young, uh, uh, sorry, adult rich so beautifully. Man has to be given some props. And Bill Skarsgård once again as Pennywise, chilling stuff. He's fantastic. I really like what they've done here, especially with some of the new imagery that they've done for Pennywise. Mind-boggling. Really great stuff. They've added some cool new effects here and there. The cinematography, once again, this is such a gorgeous looking film and so well directed, once again. You can really tell that this is a film that is more, uh, it's, it's very confident filmmaking. Which is something that's important because as the film progresses, the film makes very bold choices that it's not afraid to make. And it makes those very seamlessly. It's not afraid to take a step forward in a direction where people might be like, well, I don't know, that, that, I don't know how audiences would you know be okay with this. It's nothing as disturbing as what you think, by the way. It's not that book scene. Benjamin Walter's score is also really good. It's just as good as his first one. It's a little more toned down though, but that's going really with the tone of the film because the tone of the film is a bit toned down. This is not like a happy, fun, exciting movie. Like the first It movie, notoriously, is, is there's a lot of comedy in it. This one has some comedy, but it's more serious, it's more dire, because it's a big wrap-up coming to this entire story. So there's a lot of things to do instead of like sit around and make some nice one-liners and get a laugh out of the audience. There are some overall really great sequences also littered throughout the film. One of my favorites involving a hall of mirrors with James McAvoy. Really great scene. I would say my favorite parts of the film were easily the first and third acts. Those were by far the more interesting ones and the third act in particular is great because it actually rectifies something which was in the original book that I thought was a little silly. They have their own version of that thing here which I think is far better and works a lot better in the context of the story that this film is taking place in because that one was 1989, this one is 2016. They've done some stuff with that and I do appreciate the fact that they've done those things. There are some issues with the film, however, some pretty major issues. One of the issues is pacing. This is a two hour and 45 minute long movie that does feel its length sometimes. There are sequences which are sort of dragged out and they don't need to be dragged out. They're just unnecessarily there and you're like, come on, let's just, let's get to the real thing. We know what's, what's you know, we know we, what we want to watch. Just let's get to it a little faster. There's a couple of scenes like that where you know the payoff, you know what's coming, 
but the scene is dragged out until you're like, yeah, we know what's coming, we know what's coming. And then it happens, you're like, wow, what a surprise. Uh, <laughs> uh, but some of these scenes actually do work out well. There's a great scene with Beverly in, an, uh, in a house, which is like that, which is really well done. Certain moments like that are well done. In fact, in a lot of ways, one of some of the issues I have with this film are a bit of a paradox. Because in this case, I don't quite know what to point a finger at. Do I point a finger at the filmmaking or should I point it at how it was made? Accurate to the source material and sometimes off? Or should I blame the source material because when the source material stuff is accurate, I'm like, nah, but that's the stuff in the material I didn't even like the first time. So it's sort of a mixed bag at points. I'm like, I really don't know who gets the finger in this situation. Uh, but either way, it is definitely a bit disadvantageous, especially when you consider the runtime of it all. But the runtime is not a major thing as much as just the pacing. There's a lot of points which just, I, I, like, I think it could have been more streamlined. I think the first movie is more tightly paced. I think the first movie is more focused. This one is a bit uneven at points. Um, not entirely uneven. It's just a little bit. Um, it rectifies itself and ch uh, corrects its course later on as the film proceeds. But there are those few moments where you're like, let's just, let's get to the chase now real quick. And one of the things I did mention on Twitter, which I sort of take back, is Pennywise doesn't have a lot of screen time in this movie. He is in it. There's a lot of his illusions that are on display, and I guess a lot of people would call that as screen time. But Bill Skarsgård himself is on screen a couple of times before the big final ending. Now I don't mind that so much on reflection because it's sort of a Hannibal Lecter approach and I actually did feel it in a way, more so after contemplating it than it was while I was watching it. It made a lot more sense after the fact because I was able to process it and then start it up for the, uh, the review that I'm doing right now, really get the proper thoughts in there. The way I see it with the pacing option, you have two possible directions in which you can go. Either you can split this into two films or you can even out the pacing in this movie. Now you obviously can't do the first one anymore but if you're gonna do an extended cut of this film which they are by the way it's coming on a blu-ray then you can add in a little like wiggle room and try to even it out a little bit. Like one of the things that they did for the ultimate edition of Batman v Superman was very similar where they re-edited sequences so that it flowed better. Maybe you could do that it could help a bit. It did certainly help certain moments of that movie because those moments were a little discombobulated the way they were originally. So it's a little better now. But actually the best way I can describe this film is after I walked out of it, I, I was talking to a friend of mine and I basically said this. I said, this is kind of like when you watch Skyfall and then right after watching Skyfall, you watch Spectre. They're both fun, entertaining movies. But you know how you're watching one of them and you're like, this is not quite as refined as that other one? That's how It Chapter 2 is. It's kind of like Spectre. Or if you want to try another analogy, it's like if you watch The Avengers and then immediately watch Age of Ultron right after that. They're both fun and entertaining, but one of them's not quite as good a film, isn't it? It Chapter 2. And those are the end of my analogies, by the way. That's exactly what we have over here. This film is not bad. But I can see it getting a very divisive response. There are going to be people who are going to be mad at this film. There are certain choices it makes, certain choices it doesn't make that were a little strange. If I was to mention one other flaw, instead of the pointing fingers thing, one thing I can point the finger directly at the movie for is certain characteristics of characters are very reduced. There's an important part of Beverly Marsh's life that's very rarely seen in this movie. They sort of bring it up, they hint at it, but it's a major part of her being the way she is as an adult. And they don't really address that, which I was not a huge fan of because she's the main character. She's got top billing in this movie. I feel like they could have added a little more with that. And um, maybe, like I said, like maybe just fix a few other things. The first act, for instance, some parts, moments are a bit rushed. Maybe add in a little bit more of that. Maybe that'll be in the extended cut. Some stuff does look removed. Um, the rest are small little nitpicks here and there. Basically, 
all my issues just come down with the fact that this thing is a bit longer than it, is, it needs to be. But again, I'll know more when I see the extended cut on Blu-ray. And it's just the pacing. I know I sound like a broken record, but really those are the major issues with it. The rest of it, honestly, fine movie. Go check it out. It's really great. There is some wiggle room to get through, and it is a near three-hour movie. It's two hours and actually 49 minutes. I said 45 earlier. It's being reported as two hours and 49 minutes online now. So there is a bit of a patience uh, uh, factor to it, but it is worth the wait. Uh, overall, not quite as refined as the first movie, not quite as perfect as the first movie, but solid entry and conclusion nonetheless. I'm going to give it chapter 2 an 8 out of 10. Solid movie. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the movies.